Lloyd, or Twilight as his codename goes, is the best spy every country dreams of having. Losing his parents at a very young age due to war, he grows up and chooses to be a spy for his country, West Dallas. With his incredible speed, intellect, and ability to deal damage in close combat, he is admired by a lot of top agents. But despite all these skills, the reason he is the best spy is because of his ability to disguise and deal damage from within. For the sake of the mission, Lloyd is known for dating girls, and once his purpose is served, he doesn't even hesitate to dump them. After completing his mission, Lloyd receives details regarding his next mission. A few days ago, an important diplomat of Westalis died in a car accident in Ostania. Despite the reports, the Westalis government is sure about its being an assassination organized by the opposing party in Ostania. As it threatens the truce between Westalis and Ostania, the government cannot afford to fail this mission and that's why Lloyd is the only one capable to pull this off. Lloyd's target is the leader of the opposing party, Donovan Desmond who is the biggest threat to the truce. Lloyd's mission is to get close to him and investigate all the activities he is in involved. Desmond is a careful person, he only attends social gatherings at his son's college. That's why for the first stage, Lloyd is required to have a child, and using it, in seven days he needs to clear the entrance exam of Eden College. Lloyd understands his mission, and after a few days he arrives in Berlin, a city in Ostania. With a new name, Lloyd Forger, and a new occupation, a psychiatrist, he buys a house. Without any delay, Lloyd goes to a nearby orphanage to adopt a kid. His priorities are straight, an intelligent child who can easily pass the entrance exam. According to his demand, the owner introduces him to a girl named Anya. Lloyd looks at her and notices she is around four years old, which is two years less than the required age to give the entrance exam. Anya is a telepath. So after reading Lloyd's mind, she replies that her age is six. And to prove her intelligence, she reads Lloyd's mind and easily completes the crossword. Lloyd is amazed and immediately decides to take her. Anya was a test subject on whom multiple experiments were conducted. And as a result, she has developed the ability to read people's minds. Before entering the home, Lloyd tells Anya that from now on she is his biological daughter. Anya agrees. As she enters the house, she is amazed to see how big it is. Anya opens the TV and starts watching her favorite anime, which is about a spy named Bondman fighting evil. While she is busy, Lloyd goes out but Anya notices him leaving and also tags along. One of the most important rules for a spy is to make sure he doesn't attract unnecessary attention. However, Anya being an energetic child, he is having trouble. As they spend some time more, Lloyd realizes the girl he thought was intelligent is actually dumb. Because when Anya wanted bacon she pointed at the bakery. And when she had to pay a dollar she paid a penny instead. Lloyd wonders if the crossword was a fluke and that he should swap her. Anya hears it and starts crying that her father is going to sell her. Lloyd panics. He calms her down and promises he won't. At night, he reads books on parenting, so he can understand Anya's thought process. In it, he reads a parent must give their child the ability to think so they can progress in the future. But, for Lloyd, his future with Anya is only limited to the mission. And when he is done, he will put her back in the orphanage. The next day, Lloyd tells Anya to study for the entrance exam but she doesn't want to. So Lloyd decides to go to work instead. But this time, when Anya keeps following him, with no other choice, he locks her up. From there, Lloyd meets up with an agent. Frank who provides info about Anya's background. Frank shares that strangely, Anya's background is just not available. Not even about her parents. The only thing he knew is in just one year, she has changed more than five families. On the other side, Anya is getting bored so she decides to play with Lloyd's spy tool. Despite it being locked, she easily opens it. Because earlier she read Lloyd's mind and got to know the password. As Anya starts playing with it, she unknowingly sends a message, which is intercepted by Ostania's intelligence service. And because of it, the agents got to know a spy from West Dallas is here. After some time, when Lloyd arrives, he notices something suspicious. As he enters, he is ambushed. 
but he easily takes everyone out. On seeing Anya is not here, he realizes his identity has been compromised and now he cannot continue this family. But suddenly he is attacked by the intruder. On the other side, Anya is being tied up. They don't know who is she but they are intending to use her as a hostage. After some time, the intruder comes and brings Lloyd. Edgar, who is in charge when sees the face, realizes he has been fooled. Lloyd carrying Anya runs away. Anya knows he is her father, but still screams for help and pretends that she is with the kidnapper. After they reach outside, Lloyd gives directions to Anya to go for her safety. Lloyd is planning to send Anya to Frank who will send her back to the orphanage. Anya heard it all but still goes away. Lloyd goes back inside. With the help of the trap he set, he easily takes them down. Before leaving, he warns Edgar to not mess with him again, or else he will disclose everything about his daughter, from her height to her criminal activities, because he knows how much Edgar cares for her. After wrapping up, Lloyd walks home. But to his surprise, Anya was waiting for him. Lloyd pretends he doesn't know what happened and tells her he came from the shop. Anya knows everything. She holds her father and expresses she doesn't want him to leave her side. Because if he did, she would cry. Lloyd doesn't want to put her in danger. But after knowing she changed five families in just one year, he decides to stick with her until the mission ends. After a few days, Anya gives her entrance exam. Thinking it would be a piece of cake, she realizes all of the students near her are in the same shoes as her. With no other way out, she starts to remember what her father taught her and accordingly answers. When the results came out, Lloyd finds her name and is so relaxed that in his entire career, for once he dropped his guard down. Back at their new home, Anya receives a mail and goes to give it to her father. But Lloyd is asleep, so she decides to sleep next to him. But immediately Lloyd's senses are triggered and he gets up. Lloyd reads the letter and it's from Eden College about the admission process, moving to the interview stage, where Anya has to come with both of her parents. Without any delay, Lloyd starts looking for a mother. Frank tries his best, but for Anya he is unacceptable. Lloyd doesn't have much time so he must take quick action. The scene shifts to the city hall, where a few female staff are creeped out after a thief broke into their office only to obtain information on girls. Among the female staff, there is a woman named Yor, who doesn't mix in well because despite being 27 she doesn't have a partner. In a society where a woman is more than 25 years old and does not have a partner, she is suspected of indulging in illegal activities. Camilla, one of the female staff shares how a woman with an exact description was caught for indulging in such activities. She asks Yor if she is still single. Yor doesn't want to be seen as a suspicious person so she lies about having a partner. Camilla knows she is lying, and to make her embarrass, she invites Yor to her home for her birthday party with her partner. Yor knows she dug a hole for herself. She is worried and must find a solution. After work at home, Yor receives a call from her younger brother Yuri. Yuri like always is worried for Yor's well-being and happiness. He asks if she wants him to find someone to marry. But Yor doesn't want to make his brother worry so she again lies about having a boyfriend, with whom she is going to Camilla's party. Yuri is glad to know it. He is a friend of Camilla's husband, so he will ask him about what type of person she is dating. Yor is now nervous. She doesn't want her brother to see her as a liar. So as soon as another call comes, she rushes to clarify she was joking. But the call is not from Yuri, it's from Yor's main work employer. Yor's attitude suddenly changes. During the day she works as a staff in City Hall, but at night she is a cold-hearted assassin who takes on client requests and mercilessly kills the traitors backstabbing her country. After completing her job, while washing her hands, Yor notices her dress got torn. So she decides to buy herself a dress for the party. The following day, Lloyd is provided with all the names of the woman who is willing to get married in 48 hours. Because of recent spy hunts, Lloyd is skeptical to rely on any of his female agents and believes it's better to have a genuine wife. After reading the info, he goes to buy some dresses for Anya. In the shop, Lloyd is scanning every woman to identify a potential wife, but
but most of them have affairs or are divorced. To pass the interview, he needs a clean wife. Just then, Yor enters the shop. Lloyd is surprised to see he wasn't able to sense her presence unless she spoke. He starts searching for who she is. He soon gets to know her parents were deceased a long time ago, only has one younger brother, and no details on divorce or affairs. Both are civil servants and have a clean record. But unexpectedly, your request Lloyd the reason he has been staring at her since she entered. Lloyd is surprised to know she was able to detect it. Lloyd lies about being enchanted by her beauty. Yor gets excited. She wants to ask him out. But on seeing he has a kid, she backs off. Anya read Yor's thoughts and got to know she is an assassin and looking for a partner. She can't help but get excited to think about having an assassin mother. So she suddenly requests Lloyd that she wants a mother. On knowing this, Yor inquires about Lloyd's wife, and knowing she is no more, she requests Lloyd to be her partner for an upcoming party if he doesn't mind. Lloyd finds her perfect for the wife's role. He agrees and in return requests her to be her wife for his daughter's interview. Yor agrees. Even though Lloyd has asked Yor to be his wife only for the interview, he does intend to propose to her and marry her until the mission completes. Back at home, Lloyd receives a submission, which he has to execute on the day of the party. To wrap it up quickly, he brings Frank. After dealing enough damage and taking away a bag filled with illegal jewelry, Lloyd is glad to know he finished his work on time. However, a car suddenly comes from the front and starts attacking. On the other side, Yor has been waiting for hours. She finally understands what it feels like to have your heart toyed with. So she decides to go by herself. Camilla with others starts gossiping about how shameless Yor is to lie about having a partner. They start suspecting that Yor might be involved in something suspicious. Dominic, Camilla's husband, greets Yor. Yor requests him to tell his brother that she came with her partner. But Camilla hears it and tells it won't happen because it's bad for someone to lie just to impress others. Yor doesn't know what she has done to Camilla that she always comes in her way. Yor has the urge to kill everyone in the room so that no one will be alive to tell her brother the truth, but on getting back to her sense, she calms down. Even after minutes, when Yor is still here, Camellia and others gossip how someone can be this shameless. Yor with her sharp senses hears them and is about to take her leave when Lloyd comes covered in blood. He introduces himself as Yor's husband. But he soon realizes he made a mistake as they agreed he is going as Yor's boyfriend. To clarify about the blood, Lloyd explains he had a violent episode with his patient. Camellia couldn't believe Yor has a husband who is this handsome and hot. She tries to embarrass her by revealing that in Yor's previous work, she used to go to the hotel room to provide special massage. Actually, the massages were a cover-up for the murders. But Lloyd expresses he doesn't care about such things. He shares Yor lost her parents at a very young age, and to make sure her younger brother is raised properly, she sacrificed herself. It's one thing he is proud of her. After saying this, Lloyd and Yor take their leave. On the way, Suddenly a car starts bumping against their van. Lloyd realizes it's the attackers from earlier. Yor asks who they are. So Lloyd explains they are his patients whose treatment went wrong and now they are angry with him. Luckily, Yor buys the explanation. To cover her assassinations and not find her suspicious, Yor requests Lloyd if he would marry her, not anything romantic, just a pretend family. Lloyd was already planning this. As they are being shot at, Lloyd swiftly unpins a grenade and throws it. As it explodes, he puts the pin on Yor's finger and marries her. The very next day, Yor arrives with her stuff. Anya with excitement welcomes her mother. Yor is blushing upon being called mother. Anya starts giving a small tour of their house. And because they are only pretending to be a couple, Lloyd and Yor's room is separate. Lloyd has forged a marriage certificate that states they have been married for a year as it will not appear suspicious to eat in college. With everything being set, Lloyd briefs them about the possible questions the interviewer can ask. So to make sure they perform well, he asks both of them questions. But he soon realizes both of them neither think nor act like an upper-class family. So to make them familiar, Lloyd takes them out to spend a day as a normal upper-class family. 
They start by going to listen to opera, then to an art gallery, and after it they buy a dress for the interview, and a family photo as well. Along with this, Lloyd makes sure to tell them the way an upper-class family act and talks. Later at lunch, when he tries to test them, he is devastated to see there is no progress at all. Lloyd is losing hope. If this doesn't work, he just has to come up with every possible question the interviewer asks and prepare both of them accordingly. Your notice is how worried Lloyd is. She suggests relaxing a bit for a change of pace. Lloyd agrees and after lunch, they go out to have some relax. But their relaxation is soon disrupted when a thief stole a grandma's purse. You're without any hesitation, rushes to catch the thief, but by the time she reaches, the thief is long gone. Lloyd also goes to catch him, but he soon notices he has mixed in with the crowd. Anya uses her telepathy to hear the crowd's thoughts and finds the thief. Not to arise any suspicion, she points to the shop next to the thief. Lloyd looks in that direction and quickly spots the thief. Even though the appearance has changed, it's still hard to change the way you walk. With it, he instantly takes him down. As a spy, he broke his rule to not bring attention, but after you're initiated, he had to step in also. After handing over the purse, the grandma shows her gratitude towards them. Lloyd is surprisingly happy. In his entire life, he has never been thanked for his work, but this is certainly a nice change of pace. He thanks you for it. Your starts to blush. Anya points out they are flirting, but they immediately refuse. Looking at them, Grandma compliments what a good family it is. At home, after Anya's request, your makes hot cocoa. Despite yours bad cooking, this is the only thing Anya loves her mother makes. Even though Anya and your are not prepared for the interview, after knowing how they perceive the grandma as a lovely family, Lloyd takes it as a success. Finally, on the day of the interview, everyone is ready and enters the college. As soon they enter, Lloyd and your detect someone is keeping an eye on them. Lloyd figures out these are instructors watching their every movement. Meaning, the exam has already begun. And just as he thought, the instructors are judging the families just from the way they walk. Out of all the families, the head instructor, Henry is impressed to witness the elegancy of the Forger family. He asks for more details about them, but on finding the child, Anya has barely passed the exam with 30 points, he doesn't find them elegant anymore. According to him, if a child is 30 points, their parents are also 30 points. Soon, the second stage begins. A student is stuck and requesting help. It's a test to see if they helped the kid or not. Because if they did, their clothes would be dirty which is not appropriate for the interview. Lloyd, without any care, takes the student out. His clothes get dirty, but Lloyd was already prepared and had an extra pair. Henry is amazed but he still wants to assess them further. Suddenly a lot of animals are on the loose and charging towards the families. At first, everyone thought it is another stage, but it's an actual accident. Henry is in worry. He immediately issues orders to make sure no one is hurt. Lloyd saves a boy from being crushed. A cow, who seems to be the leader of the herd, is approaching them. This time, Yor decides to take care of it. With her assassin techniques, she neutralizes the cow immediately. Henry couldn't believe how a family could be this amazing. He goes and shows his gratitude to the Forger family. Despite their clothes being ruined, he passes them to the interview stage for saving the college's reputation. Lloyd tells him to not worry because he brought another pair of clothes. At this point, Henry is not impressed. He is genuinely scared. The last stage, also the interview stage, begins. In Lloyd's entire career, he has mixed in a terrorist group and stopped a nuke with just one second remaining, but today he is very nervous. Soon their turn comes. The first question is to Lloyd about how he meets his current wife, and how she has brought impact to their family. Lloyd calmly answers it, and describes Yor's quality. When asked the same question to Yor, she also gives a great response. Out of the three interviewers, Lloyd is worried about Swan. He researched him and found out, he is greedy, recently divorced, lot of affairs, and has been a spoiled son throughout his life. And just like he expected, Swan asks Yor, why a beautiful woman like her married such a person with a lame occupation. 
but Henry cut off him by branding the question as rude. Without provoking him, Lloyd answers the rest of the question. When asked about Anya and Yor's weaknesses and strengths, Lloyd shares his daughter as an intelligent student, with a shortcoming of being a picky eater. And as for Yor, she is a great wife and mother but has trouble in cooking. Swan is furious. He can't believe how Lloyd married a woman who can't even cook. Lloyd assures despite it, Yor is a great mother for Anya, which is more important to him than being a cook. Swan is pissed, he can't bear to see a hot couple caring for each other. He is determined to ruin this interview. Anya hears it. She understands she must do her best to prevent that. Soon, the questions shifted to Anya. Just like Lloyd taught her, Anya is answering them, even though barely. When asked about what she thinks about their parents, and how many points she would give, Anya answers they are very nice parents with whom she would want to live forever. And because of it, she gives them 100 points. Swan had enough. He asks Anya who is a better mother. Her biological or new mother. Lloyd is pissed. While constraining himself, he requests a different question. But Swan threatens to deduct their points. Anya starts crying about remembering her past. Swan laughs. He can't accept someone in this college who cries on such small little things. Lloyd has been holding a lot, he just releases his anger and ends up breaking the table making an excuse there was a mosquito. After it, before Lloyd leaves, he emphasizes that he doesn't want his daughter to attend such a college where playing with a child's feelings is normalized. Henry is furious at Swan. But Swan reminds him that his father's authority on this college is immense, and if Henry said anything else he will be fired. Henry is an instructor who genuinely wants to teach and nourish the students. He just can't hold his anger anymore and ends up punching Swan. And as for the authorities, he will deal with them. At home, Lloyd is devastated to see his mission has failed. It's the first time he let his emotions get in the way. Yor and Anya could see how much worried he is. They tell him to not worry because the other two teachers were nice people who will definitely vouch for them. Lloyd knows the worst case scenario is he has to leave the mission, but after hearing Anya wanted to live with them forever, he wants to spend a little more time with them, even if it's just a pretend family. Lloyd regains his composure and hopes for a better result. The day when the results are going to be announced has come. Forger's family begins the day with hope, but multiple premonitions happened in the form of a black cat, yours wristwatch breaking and the worst, Anya stepping on poop. Lloyd doesn't believe in such things and proceeds to check the results, but soon realizes the premonitions became reality when he couldn't find Anya's name. He is devastated. On the way, Henry stops them and shows them the list of additional successful applicants. In it, Anya's name is at the top, meaning if any of the currently selected applicants were to withdraw, she would get into the school. Lloyd and Yor are grateful to know it, but Yor wonders if no one withdraws, then Anya and Lloyd will be sad. So in order to prevent that, she must get her hands dirty. But she snaps back and scolds herself for thinking to use violence against innocent. Anya heard it all. She is very excited. At home, Anya is performing ritual to get accepted. Just then, a call came. Lloyd picks it up. And fortunately, Anya is selected. Everyone is very happy. Frank already got the information and came to celebrate. As a gift, Anya requests she wants to be saved by a bondman from a castle. Lloyd immediately refuses. But Frank tells that a theme park nearby has a castle that can be rented out. Lloyd is still reluctant, but after Anya gives the ultimatum that she'll not attend school, Lloyd finally agrees. The headquarters receives the message from Lloyd to make the arrangement for Anya's gift. Normally, such a request will not be fulfilled, but Lloyd did mention it is an important part of the operation Strix. So, the headquarters agrees to send top agents and provide funds to rent the castle for the night. Soon, a plane arrives. Everyone gets on it and heads to the castle. At the castle, every top agent is disguised as a servant and a part of a noble family. Even though they are top agents, still for them to meet Twilight and help him in the mission is a great honor. Lloyd briefs them out on what to do, and everyone gets on their position. 
Frank is playing the bad guy role. He kidnaps Anya and takes off. Lloyd is playing the role of bondman. Just like planned, he goes to save Anya. On his way, he dodges multiple projectiles, takes down top agents, and uses his spy skills to reach Anya. On seeing her father is doing all of this just for her, Anya is very happy. After doing all of this, Lloyd's next opponent is Drunk Yo who is playing the role of a witch. Yo when drunk, doesn't know how to control her powers. So every move of hers is lethal. While dodging her attacks, instead of wondering how his wife is this strong, Lloyd wonders how a witch is using physical attacks. After multiple attacks, when Yo tries to kick, her heels broke and she falls. Lloyd checks and is glad to see Yo is gone asleep. At last, the main villain appears. Lloyd easily defeats him and after so much trouble he finally saves Anya. Anya is very happy. All the agents are glad to see they were part of such an important mission. With this, Anya promises to do her best in school. The following day, Anya's measurements are taken to make her college uniform. The shopkeeper congratulates them and also warns about the increase in the number of Eden College students' kidnappings. Both Lloyd and Anya are alerted. After five days, the uniform is made. But because Lloyd has some work, he requests Yo to go and take the uniform instead. After leaving the home, Lloyd meets up with Sylvia, who is in charge of delivering information related to Operation Strix. She gives the details regarding Phase 2. In Eden College, a student with exceptional grades and contributions to society is given points known as Stella. When a student earns eight of them, they will become an imperial scholar. Desmond being a careful man, only attends social gathering that is organized for imperial scholars and their parents. However, if they do worse, students will receive tinnitus bolts. Eight of them will get them expelled. So in the next stage, Lloyd has to make sure Anya becomes an imperial scholar. On the other side, after receiving the uniform, Yo goes to buy some items for the home. While she is in the store, Anya goes out. But as soon as she steps out, she is abducted by four people. Anya remembers what the store lady told her. But before the kidnappers go any further, Yo came for rescue. She is very angry. She warns them to leave or else she will turn their head into a squashed pumpkin. Seeing her strength, all of them get scared and run away. Yor is depressed to see she failed as a mother. To make sure this doesn't happen again, at home, Anya and Yor practice combat training until orientation day. Finally, the day of the orientation come. Every selected student has gathered with their parents. Students are being allotted to their respective classes. Among all the students, it's Damien Desmond whose Lloyd is looking at. He is Desmond's second son. Lloyd has two plans. Plan A is to make Anya an imperial scholar on which Lloyd has almost given up. But Plan B has a very high chances. In it Anya will become friends with Damien so that, as a parent Lloyd can be invited to their house. Anya heard Lloyd's plan and understands what she has to do. But when she reads Damien's mind, she is in shock to see. He thinks of her as a creepy girl who is staring at him for no reason. In Anya's class, there are a lot of children whose parents have huge power in this country. Lloyd's hopes she will get along with all of them. But when a girl named Becky greets her, Anya ignores her. Because when she read her mind, Becky considers Anya as a baby, whom she wants to take care of her as a big sister. Anya's class homeroom teacher is Henry. He gives a small tour to the students and gives brief information about the importance of being an imperial scholar and how to become one. All of the students are from an insanely wealthy and powerful family. And after knowing Anya's father is a mere doctor, Damien and his friends starts bullying her by calling her a peasant. When she is pushed by one of Damien's friends, Yuan, Anya is about to unleash her killer punch which you taught her. But she remembers what her mother told her about controlling her emotions in such situations. As it will make her a much bigger person. So Anya with a smirk forgives them. Becky, who earlier thought Anya is a baby, changes her opinion and considers him a grown-up. Anya is very happy to hear it. But Damien is pissed. For this humiliation, he is planning to make Anya's life at school a living hell. On the way, he and his friends continue to bully her. After a lot of tolerance, 
Anya couldn't control her emotions anymore. Her emotions burst into a killer punch which made Damien fly away. Henry comes running demanding an explanation. Becky explained that all day Damien and his friends were bullying Anya, but this time he went too far. Henry is not satisfied with the explanation because in the end, Anya did use violence. To save herself, Anya explained she used violence because Damien hurt Becky's foot. Henry is impressed to know Anya restrained herself all this time, but when her friend was hurt, she used her strength for revenge. But still, he calls up Lloyd to explain the incident. Unknowing it's Desmond's son, Lloyd is devastated to see his plan is already falling apart. Normally, a student will receive three tinnitus bolts in case of violence, but after Henry's request, Anya only received one. The next morning, while cooking, Lloyd is worried to see Plan B is about to fail even before starting. Soon, Yur and Anya wake up. Anya again apologizes for what she did and promises to make up with Damien. Lloyd is glad to hear it. After Anya leaves for school, Lloyd and Yur go to their jobs. At school, when Anya meets Damien, she tries to apologize, but before she does Becky takes her away. Lloyd, who is spying, gets worried to see Becky trying to ruin the plan. In the class, because of yesterday's incident, Anya has developed a bad reputation. Most of the students are scared of her and hope she leaves the school. But Becky comforts Anya to not feel bad because she is with her. On the other side, Desmond, who has all his life lived in luxury with no one to ever talk back or defy his orders, is humiliated by a mere peasant. This makes him furious and determined to take his revenge. After the first class ends, Anya again tries to apologize, but Becky again ruined it. By this time, Lloyd is panicking. He had enough and takes matters into his own hands. Throughout the time, she gives indirect signals to Anya in the form of a textbook, a note attached to a student's back, and a message on omelet rice. But despite the efforts, Becky keeps on ruining it. Lloyd had enough, he goes to the announcement deck and calls Becky to the student hall. After she left, Anya goes to Damien. On seeing Anya, Damien who was earlier furious is in shock to see his heart is strangely beating heavily. As Anya tries to say, she hears Emil and Ewan's thoughts, who are getting excited just upon thinking what embarrassing name Damien will give to her. Short leg girl, gorilla girl, or maybe a stubby raccoon. Hearing all these thoughts, make Anya emotional. While crying she finally apologizes for punching and that she wants to make up. Damien starts to blush. He can't believe Anya is actually sorry for her mistake. On seeing her face, Damien is feeling strange. He doesn't know what feeling this is, but he ends up running away saying he will not forgive her because his pride won't let him. Lloyd is devastated. With this, he concludes plan B is done for. So from the next day, he puts some hope into plan A and make Anya study for hours without any breaks. Anya had enough of mental torture. She goes inside her room and shut herself in. No matter how many times Lloyd asks her to come out, she won't. Yor understands Lloyd is worried, but still, she suggests him to give her a break. But Yor realizes she was out of line. So she apologizes for butting in someone else's family matters. Lloyd tells her to not think like that. Because even though they are in a pretend relationship, still she is his wife now and an important member of this family. He respects her thoughts. Lloyd realizes he was too strict on Anya. Even though he is not her real father, he still wants to become the ideal father so he can anticipate Anya's movements and thinking. So, he goes and tells Anya about her spy anime starting soon. After no response, he goes inside and sees Anya is asleep and was studying alone. Lloyd feels proud of her. He puts her on the bed and wishes her good night. On the other side, Yuri meets Dominic on his way. He greets him and asks about the person his sister is dating. Firstly, Dominic congratulates Yuri for his sister getting married and then proceeds to tell Lloyd is a nice person. Yuri is in shock. He can't believe his sister married without him knowing. The scene shifted to the next day where Sylvia believes Anya would have already gotten two to three Stellas. After all, it was Lloyd who picked her. While panicking, Lloyd assures her everything is going fine. 
After it, Sylvia proceeds to warn Lloyd about Ostania's security service being active a lot lately about other country spies. She tells him to take care. Lloyd understands. The scene shifts to City Hall, where one of the veteran staff, Howard is arrested for supplying confidential data to Westallis. The state security service used their youngest officer to interrogate him. And it's Yuri, who on paper is a civil servant with a peaceful job, but in reality worked for security service. Yuri being only 20 years old is underestimated by his superiors, but he is the person who knows how to do his job. First, he calmly requests Howard to reveal everything he knows. Yuri has a sister complex and today he is going to meet Yor, so he wants Howard to not waste his time. After gathering enough evidence and data, Yuri knows Howard has been betraying their country for money, and also there is a top spy named Twilight in their country who is the most evil being in this world. With no way out, Howard reveals what information he supplied. But he does clarify he doesn't know anything about Twilight. Yuri knows Twilight is not an easy man, after all, it is his natural enemy. Even after revealing this, Yuri still beats him and breaks his nose for betraying and putting his sister's safety at risk just for some money. Back in the home, Yor comes worried and tells about her brother coming to visit them. She doesn't want him to find out this is a fake marriage. Lloyd assures her to not worry because he has prepared his best. It's about time Yuri comes. Anya wants to meet her uncle badly, but she ends up falling asleep. Yuri on his way is wondering why his sister waited for an entire year to reveal her marriage. He wonders if her husband is a bad person, and she is scared of introducing him. Because if this is the case, he will use his power to make sure he suffers. Yuri enters home with a bright smile. Lloyd greets him with a bright smile as well. Yuri sits down and gets straight to the point. He asks Yo the reason she didn't tell him earlier about the marriage. At first, Lloyd wanted to tell the truth that they married just because Yor doesn't want to be seen as suspicious for being single, and he needed a mother for his daughter. But Yor was against it. Because Yuri is sensitive, and to know his sister married someone she doesn't love, he would lose his composure and might cause trouble. So Yor assured him to not worry because she knows what to tell him. Back in the present, Yor tells his brother that she completely forget to tell him. Lloyd is in shock to hear it. But to Lloyd's surprise, Yuri buys the reasoning because in front of his sister, he loses all sense of logic. Lloyd presents the dinner, but Yuri gets pissed at Lloyd for interrupting the conversation. He expected the food to be bad, but he is furious to see how delicious it is. Yuri has brought some juice as a gift so that he can make Lloyd get drunk and unveil his true identity. But on seeing, his sister and Lloyd are already on a first-name basis, he is devastated. Even he who lived with Yor for years, didn't dare to call her by it. He is so furious, he ends up drinking too much juice. Lloyd sees the situation is getting worse, and to improve it, he asks Yuri about his job and the juice he bought. Yuri shares that for work purposes he was in Hagaria before coming here. There from Kalpatia, the old man who is the owner sold him this bottle for around $200. It was at this moment... Lloyd realizes, Yuri is from the secret police. It's because what Yuri just told is exactly one of the deceptions Ostania's intelligence service teaches their officers. And because after knowing about Operation Strix, Lloyd went to the shop and find out the shop is now run by the owner's son and the bottle now cost around $300. Lloyd understanding the threat of involvement with the secret police calmly handles Yuri. However, Yuri has drank too much and starts asking his sister what she saw in this person that despite having a child she married him. Yor tries to calm Yuri but ends up spilling some juice. As she tries to clean it, her hand touches Lloyd and both of them immediately pull it away. Yuri is surprised to see it. He starts suspecting how a couple who has been married for an entire year is blushing just at a slight touch. Yor and Lloyd try their best to convince him how much they love each other. But Yuri demands he wants to see them kiss. And if they don't, he will revoke their marriage license. Lloyd has been in this situation a lot of times where he has faked his love and this time too it's not anything special. Lloyd looks into Yor's eyes and tells her that they are going to do what they always do. Yor starts to blush. Lloyd holds her and comes forward to kiss her. 
Yura is freaking out, but she knows it's important to deceive her brother. So to make sure she pulls it off, she drinks the juice. And with it, she is instantly in the mood. As they are about to kiss, Yuri realizes after all he just can't bear to watch her sister kissing someone else in front of him. He rushes to stop them. But Yor despite being drunk realizes, it's still too much for her. So in embarrassment, she swings to slap, but Yuri comes in front and takes the hit. He ends up getting a lot of injuries. Yuri misunderstood, and think Yor slapped him because she didn't want him to stop their kiss. He apologizes for doubting their love. As he is about to collapse from bleeding, Yor holds him. Seeing them together, Lloyd is happy to see what a lovely siblings they are. He thanks Yuri for protecting Yor up until now. But from now on he will take care of her. But Yuri is not going to melt this easily. Before taking his leave, he warns Lloyd that he is going to come back to prove he is tricking his sister. After Yuri leaves, Lloyd understands he must stay alert and often checks for bugs in the house. The next day, Anya wakes up, only to realize she missed meeting her uncle. And on reading Lloyd's mind, she is devastated to know he is in the secret police. All the entertainment she could have gotten is now lost. After knowing Yuri is in the secret police, Lloyd is starting to suspect Yor's involvement in the secret police as well. He doesn't want this to be true because then Operation Strix would be in danger. But he still needs to confirm it. As a spy, he must suspect everyone and everything. So before heading out, he secretly attaches the listening device to Yor's collar. Anya has been listening to Lloyd's thoughts about his suspicions about her mother. She doesn't want their parents to separate, so before heading to school, she tells both of them to get along. Lloyd is amazed to see kids are this much observant. On the other side, Yuri who is at work, suddenly realizes he should have put bugs in Lloyd's house. But he soon writes it off, upon realizing he would have to hear their voices at night, which he wouldn't be able to bear. The scene shifts to the city hall, where Yor is sad because she is either a proper cook nor she was able to kiss Lloyd. She considers herself a failure. She asks her colleagues for help. But as expected, instead of helping her, they remind Yor. Her husband is just too good for her. As they are talking, Lloyd is listening. He wonders why Yor is trying to be a better mother and wife when it's just a pretend family. He decides to dig further into it. So after Yor goes out to mail the letter, Lloyd with Frank disguise themselves as secret police. And after Yor mails it, they stop her for questioning. They take out the letter she just mailed and ask why there are secret codes written in it, which are specifically meant for Westallis. Yor starts panicking. She explains that it was her superior who told her to mail it. Lloyd demands her name. And after Yor tells them, they become aggressive and ask the reason her name is in the letter. Yor panics. She tries to clarify she doesn't know. But then Lloyd threatens that because of the treason she will receive most cruelest of the punishment. However, just in case any of her family members work in the secret police, her punishment would be lowered. But when Yor again refuses to know anything, Frank tries to be aggressive. But Yor soon puts him in his place and tells him she is married. So if any other person except her husband touches her, she would break that person's arm. Lloyd reminds her that by not cooperating, she is also putting her family in danger. Yor with her death stare threatens them that if they do anything to her family then they will pay the consequences. Lloyd confirms his suspicion was wrong. He wraps up by looking at the letter again and apologizing for deciphering the message incorrectly. Yor has relief. She doesn't say anything and leaves. Lloyd realizes that it's just Yor has become attached to her family. And because of it, he now feels bad for doubting her. Frank is surprised to hear it. He reminds Lloyd that he is Westalis's best agent who has never felt guilty about doubting someone. Frank warns Lloyd that if he is too becoming attached to his fake family, the mission is in danger. It's evening, and you're on her way meets Lloyd. As an excuse to remove dirt from her collar, he gets rid of the listening device. Yor apologizes for not being able to properly act like a mother and a wife. But Lloyd comforts her not to feel like this because being a parent can be tiring. It's always good to try to become a better parent, but it's also important to take your time and not rush it. Yor is glad to hear it. She is grateful that it's Lloyd that she chose to marry. 
Anya comes home. After hearing her father's thoughts she is happy to know everything is resolved. The next day, Anya is studying for her upcoming test. In her earlier exam, she didn't do great, so Lloyd is making sure she doesn't run away and completes her studies. Anya can't let this keep going on. Earlier she made the mistake of picking the wrong student. This time she must pick the right one so her father doesn't force her to study this much. Lloyd could see Anya is losing focus, so for today he decides it is enough for the academic area, and focuses on non-academic areas, which will help her relax as well. So Anya does art, plays musical instruments, and tennis. But instead of relaxing, all of these things are making it worse. So Lloyd takes her to a hospital, where she can learn to do volunteer work. But there also, whatever the nurse tells her to do, she ends up making a mistake. And after some time, the nurse gets frustrated and begs them to leave. Inside the rehabilitation pool, a boy named Ken who is here for therapy, accidentally falls into the pool. He asks for help but because he is so far away, the other people present there aren't aware of him. But Anya on her way, hears the scream. She can't tell her father because it will be suspicious. So as an excuse of becoming a pro swimmer, she runs towards the pool and decides to help the kid herself. Anya arrives and notices the bubbles. She immediately jumps in and tries to grab Ken's hand. But she loses consciousness. Fortunately, Lloyd came for help and saves both of them. Soon, everyone comes running and is glad to see both of them are okay. Lloyd's thanks Anya for her reckless urge to swim, because of which Ken was saved. Before leaving, Ken shows his gratitude to Anya. And the next day, the news spread about Anya's bravery, and she receives her first Stella. Both Lloyd and Yor are proud of her. Anya is very happy as well. Because it's the first time, her power helps someone. From the next day onwards, Anya's image has suddenly improved and she is like a celebrity. Every kid of her age is looking up at her because she is the youngest student to receive a Stella this quickly. Anya realizes this is the time when Damien will come begging her to come to his house. And after it, her father will thank her for bringing peace to the world. But to her surprise, Damien is more pissed than ever. And on top of it, even though her image has improved outside, inside her class, everyone believes she must have cheated. Surprisingly, Damien comes to Anya's defense. He reminds others that their school is not a third-rated place that would give Stella to anyone without any investigation. But this all makes Damien more frustrated to see a mere peasant has a lead on him. At lunch, Becky asks Anya what reward she is going to ask. At first, Anya was thinking of peanuts for the whole year, but Becky suggests her to think of a better thing. Like a pet. Anya gets a nice idea. She asks Damien if he has a pet. Damien didn't reply and leaves. But Anya read his mind and got to know Damien has a dog. So she decides to ask for a dog as well, so that Damien will invite her to his house and the world peace would be regained. At home, Anya arrives and requests her father for a dog. Lloyd thinks it's a good idea to have a guard dog. And on the other side, you're as worried about the danger big dog possess. Anya read their thoughts and starts to fear. She emphasizes that she wants a dog that is tiny and cute. Lloyd prefers a guard dog, but after all, it's Anya's gift, so he agrees and decides to buy it the next weekend. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.